Act one, scene four, Robbie Kanner. Robbie is a design and art director currently helping to redesign public education at the local nonprofit Great Schools Partnership. His posters have been adding character to the windows of Portland's music venues for the better part of 10 years. His list of clients includes Friendlies, Kabang Music and Art Film Festival in Bangor, Olo Hair Salon here in Portland, Portland Stage Company, University of Maine at Augusta and the Portland Phoenix. Robbie's buddies tell us that he is everyone's former colleague turned dear friend. And they confided to us that it is terrifying to partake in sports with Robbie. In basketball, he will channel the NBA's seven foot center, Bryant Big Country Reeves, and push you out of the paint until he can finish with his trademark running layup, which is impossible to defend. And that this crazy talented dude is a master of photography, graphic design, and winning Twitter fights with B-list celebrities. <laughs> Will you please help me welcome Robbie Kanner. Hi, everyone. Feel free to talk at me. It's OK. How's things going? You guys good? All right. I got to adjust this real quick, because I'm tall. Cool. That's me. <clears throat> so I'm going to sort of uh, reiterate a couple of things that Ron said. Uh, I'm a graphic designer in Portland, Maine. I work at a nonprofit called Great Schools Partnership. Um, and I've been doing that for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do to sort of intro this talk is, now that you know a little bit about me, thanks, I want to learn a little bit about you. So similar to the last talk, if we could raise your hand if you work in mostly business, that'd be pretty awesome. So yeah, if you work mostly in business. All right. So raise your hand if you work mostly in creative. Now, raise your hand if you interact with design on a daily basis. So you all should have raised your hand on that last question. <laughs> because the fact is, whether you know it or not, you interact with design on a daily basis. And it's pretty unconscious, pretty frequently. Um, but it's an important thing, you know. You get in your car and you drive here, you're going to interact with the dashboard in your car, and that's design. You walk into Space Gallery, you're going to see posters, and that's design. <clears throat> My thought is that good design is a clear transaction. It's as crisp as a sunset without a cloud in the sky. That being said, the process of designing is often a super confusing one. And it's my job to sort of make that process go as cohesive and cleanly as humanly possible. Now, do you guys know who Victor Popinek is? Negative, cool. So Victor is an industrial designer, or was an industrial designer, and he sort of worked for the people. His famous quote, the only important thing about design is how it relates to people. Now this is something that we consider as designers on a daily basis, and it's fun for us. It's sort of why we do it. <clears throat> now, between uh, the client, designer, product, and audience, there are multiple ways in which a few small miscommunications can screw up a significant amount of great work. My job is to do everything I can to foresee these potential mistakes and prevent them to happen. Because after all, and I know this is a super bold statement, but bad design can and probably will screw up lives. <laughs> so let's take a logo that I did. Uh, this is uh, a client, uh, Portland Youth Rock Orchestra. They hired me to develop a logo for their, non, uh, logo for their nonprofit. Um, they are a nonprofit dedicated to working with teens interested in working with uh, music in Portland. Uh, and here is the first round of logos that I did for them. I started on the top right with this sort of wireframe image here. I sort of find that uh, to start off, it's best by just getting something on the, the Illustrator page. Used to be blank page, but we're in the digital world now. Um, so that's where I started. We started and moved on uh, to the second round here. Uh, you can see on the bottom left, I'm starting to work with the cello illustration that we saw in the original image. I'm also starting to work with uh, typographic styles as well. And then at this point, Kevin and I got on the phone. And we decided we liked two things a lot. We liked the idea of the cello illustration, and we also liked the concept of a seal. The seal sort of provided this authenticity that we both liked. So I started creating these little things in different styles and different colors. 
after we saw these, we sort of narrowed down the last one, which was just basically small kerning and some details. Uh, and we end up with the next slide, which will happen now. <coughs> so here's the, the final product. Uh, this is after 30 mockups, four different revisions. Uh, we end up here. I know I'm a little biased because I actually made it, um, but I think it looks pretty good. So the next sort of slide we're going to look at is a reiteration of a slide that we saw before, this little graph thing. So this thing was paramount in creating that logo. The process was the client hired me as a designer. I made this product and then got distributed to the audience. That's sort of the way it functioned. And it has to function that way because design's solved by rules. And these things have to be solved into place to work properly. But beyond that is a process. Um, <clears throat> so with the process, if I would have taken this logo just strictly from a creative place, it wouldn't have landed as great as I wanted to. Uh, chances are the information that I was going to do would be muddled. Uh, it's possible that it would have been unclear in its intention, and it, that wouldn't serve anybody well. <laughs> so we sort of look at a, a fake logo here. But in reality, a lot of designers can get very attached to their creative side. And when that happens, a lot of bad things happen. And it does not work well for me as a designer, and it's also not effective for the client or the audience. Now, in the same breath, if it would have gone strictly business, we would have, yeah, ended up with a piece that was very clear and concise, but also would have been super rational and hyper intentional. Um, and more importantly, it would have been heartless. And design sort of needs to have that heart, it needs to have this emotional attachment that works with it. So <clears throat> here is what I call the happy medium. See the creative on the left, the business on the right. And mine's really huge in the middle, and it looks really great. <laughs> See, combining these two in equal measure is paramount. Good design must achieve a balance that draws an emotional reaction from the audience and maintains clear and direct lines of communication between client, designer, and audience. It doesn't ask the user to think too hard for too long. The timeline for effective communication is continually jeopardized by the reality of our busy lives. Designers want to communicate as quickly and clearly as possible, allowing the audience to access the information they need and move on with their day. So back here, we have original image and we have the final product. Good design takes just that sliver that was introduced and turns it into this functioning thing that can work as a brand. You know, you're going to see this for the rest of your life if this is your business. It has to be clear in what it is. And if I can leave you with one final thought in this entire talk, it'd be this. Quality design lets you know what it is without you questioning why it is. I'd like to thank you for coming out. And <laughs> cheers. That's all, folks. A great man of the theater, Robbie, did work at Portland Stage Company. It was incredibly valuable in like so many, so many different ways. Thanks, Robbie.